Let's consider how you're programmed. What is the usual condition? There are two types of persons researchers have pointed out. One is called the maximizer. This research first came out 10 years ago, and now it's being republicized to see how people are reacting after 10 years of hearing about this. Generally, success means the maximizer. That means someone who at every moment is always analyzing how to get the best. Never be satisfied with second best. If you're listening to one radio station, what are you thinking while you're listening? What's on the other one? What's on the other one? <laughs> <laughs> I've got to be sure that nothing better is playing on the other station. If you're watching television, you're channel surfing because you, you can't be the one to miss out on something better on another channel. You can't rest in peace. You have to always get the best at every moment. You're always checking the reviews. When you shop on Amazon, you study every single of 500 reviews. <laughs> it's so agonizing to make a decision because you have to be fully prepared and you have to do a total analysis to find out and be sure this is the best thing. That's called the maximizer. And success generally means that. Success means how to shape you as a maximizer because supposedly that's the way you're going to be happy. This maximizing syndrome affects every aspect of your life from your choice of girlfriends and you know, choice of boyfriends, from your choice of jobs, from your choice of everything you do, your purchasing especially, it has to be the best. You can't be known for anything but the best. And then you are successful. An example. Research was done at Columbia University about graduates there. Those who fit into the maximizer category, exhaustively sifting through all job offers, analyzing every job situation, uh, pouring over countless details to make the best decision. Generally, these maximizers who graduated from Columbia University earn 20% more than the other type. And what's the other type called? A term has been coined for them. Satisficers. They're like, yeah, this is good enough. This will do. <laughs> it may not be the best, but it's all right with me. It's good enough. Those words to a maximizer, of course, are, are poisonous. Good enough. <laughs> so, in this study of students at Columbia University, the maximizers indeed got jobs with 20% more income. But, guess what? They were totally miserable. <laughs> Whereas the other guys, the satisficers, you know, good enough, yeah, it's all right, John. <laughs> they were much happier. So, what does that tell you? about what you want to be. <laughs> You're trained to be a maximizer. But social researchers have found that the maximizers are so much into it, into their trip, that they're bordering on clinical depression. I don't know if you've heard, in a survey done by the US government, federal government, it was found that 45% of college students have at least one psychological problem that requires professional attention. Not that it doesn't mean here. <laughs> the other schools. 
45% have at least one. Something is not working out in terms of our quest for success. The maximizers held to be the pinnacle of success. But actually, they're miserable. Wonderful questions. Yes. So uh, you had mentioned that um, you had mentioned earlier how if we really strive for success, at least anxiety, and that those who settle for second best tend to be content. And you gave an example with statistics as well before. Um, so my question is: Should we aim for second best, or should we just? Uh, continue to strive for. The like, ideal lifestyle is one in which your main goal is your spiritual development. You never settle for second base when it comes to that. Thank you.